Welcome. Let us begin with a, a time of silence before the Lord. Lord, in your holy name, in the name of God, our Father, God the Son, our Savior, and God the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. We worship you and we pray. Amen. Our, our hymn uh, this evening, our first one, is number 570 uh, in your uh, brown hymnals. Number 570, we'll sing verses 1 through 3. Please turn now to page 260, and I want to especially thank Ann and Denny, especially for uh, helping to lead us in, in this uh, part of our liturgy.
Our first reading is from Numbers chapter 15, 38 through 40. Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a cord of blue on the tassel of each corner. And it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. So you shall remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The next reading is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22, and Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 through 36. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. And now please join me on page 264 as we uh, recite the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods... You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And we continue with the the creed and the prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated. It's amazing when you think that someone could just approach Jesus, the Messiah, and just touch the cloth that was upon him and that they would be made well. And this was spoken of uh, in the New Testament. But it goes back to the Old Testament, too, on, on the way God had his holy people dress. This, this again, this evening, is a short devotional from uh, the Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn. And he does, giving these devotional messages in the sense of telling a story. He said, He led me into the chamber of garments, and there he found a prayer shawl, white with blue stripes, and draped it over his head. Do you know what this is? he asked. A prayer shawl, I replied. It's called a talit. The most important part of the talit is its corners and the fringes of its corners. In the law of Moses, it was commanded that the children of Israel were to wear fringes on the corners of their garments. The corner itself is called the kanaf, and the fringes on the corners are called the tzitzit. In the New Testament, there are no physical descriptions of Messiah. We don't know what he looked like. But we do know what he wore. His garment had four sacred corners and fringes, the kanaf and the tzitzit. It is recorded in the Gospels that a woman with an infirmity once touched the hem of his garment and was instantly healed. The miracle was not unique. In fact, it's recorded that everyone who touched his garment was healed. But they didn't just touch the hem of his garment. The New Testament Greek renders that which they touched as the kraspadan. Kraspadan is a translation of the Hebrew words kanaf and tzitzit. So they weren't just touching the hem of his garment. They were touching the sacred corner of his garments as ordained in the law. Exactly. And at the very end of the Hebrew Scriptures, an amazing verse appears. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings. But in Hebrew, it doesn't say with healing in his wings. It says with healing in his kanaf, the same word that is translated kraspadon, the fringe of Messiah's garment. So they touched the kanaf, the corner, the fringe, of the Son of Righteousness, Messiah, and they found healing in his wings. Therefore, never be afraid to touch God. If God puts fringes on his garment, it means he is touchable. He is not afraid to be touched. So touch God with your infirmities, your wounds, your uncleanness, your sins, and the darkest part of your life, and you will be changed. For the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in its wings, with healing in his kanaf. Touch God today with the darkest, most painful, most ugly part of your life, and you might find healing in his wings. So let us pray. Son of God, we thank you that you gave us the promise that where two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are here among us. And Lord, we do reach out to touch you this evening. 
We know that you have healing that flows from you. Lord, bring your healing and your forgiveness, your cleansing, your wholeness and your wellness to us. Lord, take all of our anxieties, our concerns, our worries, our questions, our problems. And Lord, we thank you that you care for us and that you give us wisdom. Lord, we cast all of our cares, as Peter said, upon you, knowing that you care for us. Lord, we long for your touch. We love you. We acknowledge you to be with us here tonight. We reach out to you and we touch you. In the precious name of our Lord and God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And we continue with our, our hymn again. I believe it's 570, uh, the last three verses. And we continue with the prayers on 265. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and Father, we also pray for 
our circuit pastors who will be gathering together tomorrow morning and into the afternoon. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all the needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. And I invite you to please pray with me the collect for the word. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And again in the second column on the next page is the evening prayer. Please pray with me. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil may have no power over me. Amen. And please turn to hymn number 940 and stand as we sing.
the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen.